Hello guys, in this video we'll look at one of the most interesting concepts of lifetime in Rust. We'll understand it with an analogy so you guys can grasp it and we'll also take a look at lifetime via scope. We'll understand why do we need lifetime, when do we need lifetime and which are those scenarios when compiler cannot infer lifetimes. So we have to use lifetime parameters and later we'll also look at static lifetimes. So at the end of this video, you will be mastering lifetimes in Rust, which is again, if you are using in your code, you are making it amazing in terms of performance. And anyone who looks at your code will understand that this guy knows how to program Rust. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, as we start, there is a link to my discord in description. Make sure to join it. We are building a community of like minded people where we share lots of things and we do talk on different things related to Rust and programming in general. So make sure to join it. Let's try to understand with an analogy. Let's say you go to a library, you find your favorite book and you borrow it. Now, let's say the library is set to be closed in next 10 months. Now the library will only let you borrow the book as long as the library itself is open. Like you can borrow the book for one week for one month, for six months, for maybe nine months, but you cannot borrow for more than 10 months because this library is set to be closed after 10 months. So the library doesn't exist, which is kind of honor of the data. The data is basically your book. So in Rust terms, the library is the owner of the book, the data, and you are borrowing the book, a reference to the data, and the lifetime ensures that you return the book before the library closes. So basically they assign you some expiry. In the same terms in Rust, we have lifetime that ensures that you return the book, you return the data before the owner of the data goes out or drops. So that's the exact concept of lifetime in Rust. And now let's try to understand it a bit more technically with lifetime and scopes and everything. Let's try to understand lifetime with an example. So we have a I as hello. The lifetime for I starts right here. And then we have a J that borrows I basically takes the immutable reference. And then we just print J. Now, as you can see, first J goes out of the scope borrow ends. So the borrow checker ensures that J does not outlive I. And what happens if I is kind of dropped before J? We'll see in a minute, but let's try to run this. Now, as you can see, it prints hello, which is as expected because J takes the immutable reference or borrows I. Now, what if we try to drop here our I and we try to end lifetime of i or let's call it i gone now let's rerun this now as you can see we get an error and as you can see what it says is end of lifetime of i move out of i occurs here so basically i is moved here now you must know that in rust there is no garbage collection because in Rust, we have, you know, ownership and borrowing. We have concept of moving memory, uh, like the blocks here and there. So in Rust, there is no garbage collection. As you can see, I, it says move out of I occurs here. So I is dropped and borrow later used here. Borrow is used later. So that's against the lifetime because, you know, you cannot outlive the lifetime of someone that you literally borrowed from similar going to the library example so this is how uh, the lifetime works in rust now let's try to understand with another example to understand lifetime and scope so let's take an example of lifetime and scope we have a i as 310 now lifetime of i starts here and lifetime of i ends here because i is getting used as you can see we have a couple of in our scope or in our block and in our first scope we have a borrow of i 
So the lifetime of borrow one starts here. And with the scope ending, lifetime of borrow one ends here. Similarly, we have borrow two and borrow two again lifetime starts here and lifetime ends here because i is still up and alive that's why we can borrow we cannot outlive our borrow from i because you are literally doing the borrowing so borrow has a lifetime that is determined by where it's declared as you can see it's inside the scope so the lifetime of borrow is only inside within that scope and as a result the borrow is valid as long as its lender is valid so as you can see if i is valid as we saw in the previous example if i is valid then j was valid but as you can see right here if we drop i literally here then this one is also not valid because it's dropped and borrow cannot outlive i or even if we drop like on line 6 or even on line 13 so and however the scope of the borrow is determined by where the reference is used so that's lifetime and borrowing now let's continue to pile up on what we have learned so far so we better understand why do we need lifetime and where the compiler cannot infer lifetime and uh, static lifetimes so uh, let's go to uh, why do we need it so by now with our analogy and a couple of examples you should have understood why do we need lifetime but just for the sake of it a lifetime is a construct the compiler or more specifically its borrow checker uses to ensure all borrows are valid similarly in the library analogy or the example that i gave the expiry date is given to ensure that you must return the book before the library is closed so that's why your borrow checker uses lifetimes to ensure that the borrows are valid and what does that ensure that we don't have dangling references now in the first example we did see dangling references where you know i is dropped but j is still looking for i or still using it so a dangling reference happens when you try to use a reference of the data that no longer no longer exists like we saw in the first example when data was still being referred but it's gone so rust lifetime basically ensures that the references are always valid when they are being used and another reason why do we need lifetime in rust is rust doesn't have a garbage collector now in languages like python or java a garbage collector keeps track of memory and ensures that references are valid while they are being used on the other end rust relies on ownership and lifetimes to manage memory at compile time without having runtime overhead so for that reason we need lifetime in rust and at times uh, the compiler can't always infer lifetimes so we'll look at it with an example when does the compiler cannot infer lifetime so we have to use lifetime parameters so let's look at that let's try to understand the third reason of why do we need lifetime is when the compilers can't infer lifetime we'll try to create a need of it and then we see how can we solve it using the named arguments or named parameter apostrophe and the lifetime so for the next five minutes please be very focused and if you understand next five minutes trust me rust will be more easy for you because you understand a very critical concept of lifetime and how does it work so right here we have a x as hello and we are passing a reference as you can see and we are returning a reference we don't need to tell lifetime right now because as you can see the borrow checker knows only one argument is passed and the reference is returned so the lifetime of your result is same as the lifetime of x we'll try to understand by running this as well so let's say we do cargo run as you can see it prints hello what if we drop x before we print the result it fails and the reason is the same that we saw in the first example that says because you are returning a reference to your argument in the result and the reference is no longer valid it's dropped so let's remove this 
and this is when we don't need lifetime but when do we need it so let's say we have a y as string from world and in our function let's say we have a y and str and we pass the reference of y and then let's do if x dot len is greater than y dot len then we return x else we return y everything nice and clean but as you can see right here there is a red line and it says missing lifetime specifier why does it say because now we have multiple arguments x and y and we are returning a reference so the borrow checker is confused and doesn't know if the lifetime of result is dependent on x or y so we have to use now apostrophe and a b c anything to to show the lifetime of our result and if we try to run this as you can see it also says expected named lifetime parameter this function return type contains a borrowed value a reference a borrowed value but the signature does not say whether it's borrowed from x or y which is clear right and it gives us to use these named lifetime parameter so what we have to do is let's say a and right here and now if we try to run the same code it works as you guys can see it prints world which is again the longest between hello and world but this is when the compiler couldn't infer the type and we have to manually provide like the uh, sorry compiler couldn't infer the lifetime and we have to manually provide the lifetime named parameter and again what does that mean that result cannot outlive x and y so if we try to drop x if we try to drop y and then we run the same code even though we have our lifetime named parameter but still because they were dropped and the lifetime of the result depends on x and y that's why we cannot use the result now because as you can see it says moved out here and the borrowed of y occurs here the borrowed of y declared here again same for x but we are still using it and that's why we cannot uh, basically use this so as you guys can understand we need to infer the lifetimes so now this is still pretty basic example what if we have x and y with different lifetime that could be true right what if y is dropped before you know uh, x and result so let's say we have multi lifetime now and y has a different lifetime which is b and what if we try to run this as it is no change if we run this it still fails and why does it fail because as you can see it says you are using y which could be a result returned and your lifetime is still a right y has a lifetime b but your result is still using a lifetime only so basically you could you know pass let's say hello and world here and the value will be returned this but the lifetime of result is different so when will be this allowed to me so let's say what we do is we return x and then we run this it works because now you are never returning y you are only using it so even though if y gets dropped before you are using it for printing result or anything doesn't matter because on both sides or in whole of your function you are just always returning the reference to x you are never using reference to y and reference to x has the same lifetime as your result so it's as simple as if the function returns a reference and text multiple arguments 
then the compiler cannot infer the lifetimes you must explicitly specify them let's try to take another example now this time not a function but a struct remember you can have lifetime parameter with a struct trait function now just like our function we need to you know pass the parameter in the signature similarly if we don't pass right here as you can see it gives an error which says undeclared lifetime so we have to pass right here and pretty easy example please pause here and just answer in the comment will this run and if your answer is no then you are correct why will it not run because as you can see we have a novel here and we have the first sentence again that is borrowed from novel and part basically has your first sentence so the lifetime of part is same as the lifetime of your first sentence which is same as the lifetime of novel so if we try to run this it gives us an error and how will this work if you remove it and you give it a bigger lifetime and then you try to run this it works so again this is pretty easy concept of lifetime and i hope you guys understand ownership and borrowing if you don't there should be some video popping on your right top i have already covered like borrowing and ownership in detail make sure to watch that and then watch this lifetime now going back to our readme we understood it with an analogy lifetime is scope why do we need lifetime and where the compiler cannot infer lifetime we saw it with literally example by feeling the need of it now let's look at static lifetime let's try to understand static lifetime with an example now just like we had you know apostrophe a apostrophe b in previous example to signify the lifetime of x and y similarly static is reserved for lifetime in rust and it signifies that special lifetime that indicates that a reference or data lives for the entire duration of the program this means that data is either hard coded into the program as you can see on line 2 or is allocated in such a way that it will never be deallocated for the entire execution of the program so that's when we we can return a reference as you can see right here we are not passing any arguments here but the lifetime is and static string so basically it will always return the same no matter if you call call one or you call it like thousand times or 20,000 times in your program it will always return I have a static lifetime I have a static lifetime if you change it to subscribe to semicolon and please do if you want to be master of rust or life and programming in general please do and it will always return this no matter how many times you call this so it has a static lifetime Similarly, global number, you use it like tons of times in your program, it will always return 42 unless you literally go here and do it for 42. So it's declared in such a way that it has a static lifetime. So with that, that kind of end for this video where we tried to understand the concepts of lifetime, when do we need it, when the compiler cannot infer and remember all those when the compiler cannot infer. So try to, you know, experiment it with, you know, we did it with function and struct. You can try trait and let me know in the comments. What do you think about this concept of lifetime and how was this video? I'll catch you guys in another video with another interesting topic. Until then, cheers.